Hi again, Risa here, back with another episode of Ask Risa. It's 2020, new year. So we are still doing Ask Risa. If you missed uh, my announcement at the end of last time's episode, I'm going to start doing these every other week instead of every week because the every week production schedule was too much for me to handle. I did it for a whole year and I'm very proud of that, but I'm cutting back to every other week in 2020. So since this is the first episode of 2020, I thought it would be fun to talk about some wedding trends that you can expect to see for 2020. First, color. Color is going to be big, like bold color, jewel tones, super saturated colors, um, going all in on one color, like choosing a color and really running with it. Like if you choose emerald green, you're gonna have emerald green everything. Also color blocking. So like choosing two sort of contrasting colors and having two solid colors contrasted against each other all over the place. Um, if you're a girl, you probably know what color blocking is. If you're a guy, whatever, Google it. <laughs> You'll get some image examples. So color is just gonna be really big, um, really vibrant florals. So not so much pastels anymore, but just like really big, bold, um, lovely colors. And the Pantone color of the year for 2020 is something called classic blue. It's kind, it's not navy, it's like, Darker than royal blue, lighter than navy blue, but it's a really bold, um, heavily saturated blue color. If you are super fashion forward, you will incorporate classic blue into your wedding. Oftentimes it takes like a year before the Pantone color really makes its way into weddings. Um, some of that is because we plan weddings like a year in advance. So a lot of the design decisions for 2020 weddings have already been made like for spring and summer weddings. But last year's color was vibrant coral. So you might expect to see more of that this year and then the classic blue will start making its way into weddings in 2021. Also, um, because we're now in the 20s, there's going to be a lot of throwback to like the 1920s, um, the the roaring 20s, that sort of Great Gatsby, Gilded Age, um, lots of Art Deco, geometric designs, black and white with gold or other metallic accents, um, really shimmery fabrics and a lot of faux fur. In the 1920s, it would have been real fur, but in the 2020s, we're going with faux fur. Um, architectural cakes, things that look like skyscrapers that just bring out more of that geometric. Um, if you, so today is just a couple days after the Golden Globes were on. And if you watched the Golden Globes or if you looked at any of the fashion recaps, you can actually see both of these points, both the uh, black and white with metallics and the bold saturated pops of color play out on the red carpet. So if you Google like Golden Globes red carpet recap, you'll see a lot of really bright gowns. Like I don't think anybody was wearing pastels. There was just a lot of fuchsia, a lot of emerald green, some yellow. Um, there were a couple of really interesting metallic dresses, uh, a lot of black and white dresses. So fashion, influences weddings. What's happening in fashion is going to make its way into weddings. So those things are coming down the pike for weddings. So if you want to be ahead of the curve, start thinking about that for your 2020 or 2021 wedding and you'll be uh, right on top of things. Also big in 2020 is going to be sustainability. I actually did a whole series of posts about sustainability last year. Um, and the fact that it was gonna be big in 2020. So things like reusing your decor, repurposing things, nothing single use, no single use flowers, no single use plastics, just everything, making the most of it. Um, using recycled paper for your invitations, not doing paper invitations, uh, using soy-based ink on the invitations, making donations to charities in lieu of giving out favors to people, using local sustainable food and flowers so you don't have that big carbon footprint of transporting in food and flowers from elsewhere. So doing everything you can to reduce your carbon footprint for your wedding. And I have a whole series of blog posts on the topic and there are a whole bunch of videos. I think I did four videos 
um, on the topic of sustainability and how to improve your wedding's sustainability. And then personalization. I mean, personalization is always kind of big. Everybody wants their wedding to be a reflection of themselves, but it's like taking personalization to the next level. Uh, what's your favorite food? Is it popcorn? Have that at your wedding. Is it sushi? Have that at your wedding. Um, interactive food stations like a grilled cheese bar where there's, there's a chef and you choose your bread and you choose your cheese and maybe there's some uh, tomatoes or meats or something if you want to put them on there and make it fancy but you get to interact with the person who's making your food as opposed to just so somebody just coming out and handing you a plate of food. Um, things like a sundae bar as a dessert option, uh, baked potato station where you know you've got all the fixins and some they just kind of go down the line and and put whatever they want on their baked potato. Um, Mocktails are going to be big. Uh, not everybody drinks, so signature cocktails have always been kind of a thing, but now having a signature mocktail, either in lieu of or to complement your cocktail for those of your guests who aren't drinking, gives them a fun, festive option um, if they don't want any alcohol. Having foods from different cultures. A um, lot of multicultural weddings taking place, so you know, maybe if you've got uh, a Persian bride and a Mexican groom, you know, maybe you're serving Persian desserts and, you know, um, Persian ice cream and lots of nuts and pistachios and things like that. And maybe you're having like churros for dessert or you're having tacos or something. Just a lot of mashup of different food cultures that are relevant to the couple getting married. And then um, allergen free menus because a lot of people have food allergies. So going past just the idea of having a, a vegetarian option for that three people who are gonna want it to having really put some thought into your vegetarian options, but also having gluten-free options or maybe soy and dairy-free options or maybe even a vegan option. So just really customizing your menu to a level that hasn't necessarily always been done in the past. And going big with desserts as opposed to having the cake be the central like showpiece of the desserts, just doing like a huge dessert bar with a bunch of different options. I've already had a bunch of clients do that. Some people are not cake people. I mean, I don't get it, but whatever. If you don't love cake, don't serve cake. I also did a whole Ask Risa and blog post about desserts that you can serve that are not cake. I think I came up with 10 ideas of things you can serve for dessert that aren't cake. So when you do a dessert bar, you can have all kinds of options. You can do all 10 of them if you wanna go nuts, but you know, do something fun that means something to you and is like personalizing your wedding to your tastes. Uh, another category is live entertainment and that can be music like a live band or a jazz trio or something but it doesn't necessarily have to just be music. It could be like a magician or a poet who writes poetry right there on the spot for people or like a tarot card reader or um, having like a virtual reality station or a champagne lounge where you've got, you know, you could even do like a velvet rope setup and you've got lounge furniture and maybe there's special champagnes with a special, like a sommelier or something who's in the champagne lounge, telling people what, about what they're drinking. Um, and then one of my favorites is actually live art. I have talked about this a few times and it's basically an artist comes to your wedding and paints a scene from your wedding, either the ceremony or the reception live as it's unfolding. And throughout the night, the guests can like see it as it gets painted. And then at the end, you have this amazing piece of artwork that captures a moment from your wedding that you can hang on the wall in your house. And it's just the coolest idea. I've never had a client do it, but I talk about it all the time. I really want someone to do it. So if you're watching this and you wanna do something really interesting at your wedding, talk to me about live art because I do have a couple of people that I can recommend to you. And then my last item is on lighting. So neon signs, again, bringing in kind of those bold pops of color, those are gonna be popular. You don't have to do all your signage in neon, but like bar signs in neon, photo booth backdrops as neon signs. Those are two really cool places to use them. Um, anything that glows in the dark, like glow in the dark decals or glow, glow sticks. Uh, you know, I am 
waiting for a client who wants to do a grand exit, not with sparklers, which has been done a million times, but with glow sticks, because that's fun and less of a fire hazard. And here in California, you know, that matters because stray sparks could cause a conflagration that, you know, is bad news. So glow sticks, much safer option than sparklers. Um, also, using uh, like regular normal looking light fixtures, but putting cool light bulbs in them, like some sort of iridescent light or a purple light or a blue light, something like that. And um, again, bringing geometrics in, like maybe you have a geometric chandelier or something hanging or just uh, geometric lights throughout your reception space. Also holographs kind of plays into the whole like glow in the dark, iridescent, shimmery thing that we've gonna, we're gonna have going on in 2020. But um, if you wanna have like a ceremony backdrop or a photo booth backdrop that's got like iridescent holographic qualities to it, that's very cool. So again, just trying to bring in more color, more interesting details and not um, not doing the same thing that everybody's been doing for the past decade. That's what 2020 is about. It's the start of a new decade, depending on how you count. Um, and so it's time for something new. Like what we've been doing for the past 10 years is over. Like mason jars, done, over, they're done. Let's just put a fork in those. So it's time to move on. We've got a new decade, fresh start, fresh ideas. Let's uh, let's move away from some of the things that you're still seeing all over Pinterest and think outside of the box. I hate that phrase because that in itself is kind of trite, but just think about what you like and that's gonna be what you wanna do for your wedding. You wanna make your wedding as personal as possible. So if you have any questions or any other suggestions that you think I should uh, add to my written blog post, obviously it's too late for me to change the video, but there's always a written blog post that goes with these. Let me know, shoot me a DM, comment on YouTube, comment on Instagram, send me an email, whatever. And I will be back in two weeks to talk about something else. I already have it planned out, but I don't remember what it is right now. <laughs> so I'll see you in a couple weeks. Happy New Year. Bye.